I wanted to make Hurry Up kind of an exercise in big, heavy eighth notes. Uh, by eighth notes, I just mean something about this tempo. And usually that's not fast enough to be really terrifying, rip your head off kind of metal. But I thought if I do a cool melody within it and mute the strings and make it sound big and, and cool, then, uh, then it'll work. So this was the melody I came up with. And that was basically it. It's, it's based on very simple chords, based on E major. And I did this melody there. Then an A chord. And then this melody there. Then a C minor, C sharp minor. And I did the same melody up in that key. Back to the A. And it is a scale down. E major scale. So all together. And you can play it politely like that, or you can add some grit and muting and lots of downstrokes. There, it comes to life when you do that. So the next thing I did that I, I like in this song with eighth notes is I put together a melody that sounds like this. That was all written inspired by the bass part. The bass part was really simple. It was just an E major scale going down. But the trick to make it interesting was to put an unusual number of notes uh, or an unusual rhythm on each one. So for example, instead of just going like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That might be your normal rock song. But instead, I did, uh, let me see if I can remember, I did four notes, then three. So it'd be like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, one. I think that was it. And, um, you know, I, I did it really at random. I actually wrote the numbers down like like math and then uh, and then just played it to a, the bass part to a click track, you know. Something like that. And, um, and then tried to compose a guitar melody that would go with it. So each part, like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, I went. You, know, you can hear the, how I outlined the chords. And then this would be the... the that goes with that, and then... That goes with that note. And then... I think I did, let's see... Yeah. That kind of sounds... Uh, I just went all the way down. I'll play it slow for you once. There I use the open B string to make the guitar sound more resonant. And that's the whole thing. Then you put your distortion on and play it for real. This, this is the castle, the Dragon's Lair Castle in Hollywood. And uh, this is the inspiration for the song title, The Curse of Castle Dragon. And uh, in this song, we're gonna use lots of harmonic minor scales, picking, fast picking, uh, other heavy things in arpeggios. So I hope you enjoy learning these riffs from the curse of Castle Dragon. Rock and roll.
The Curse of Castle Dragon. I want to show you some of the main parts. And the first part is an A minor 9 arpeggio, followed by three power chords. But I play the notes separately. It would be D, E, and F. So if you connect that, then I hit the high F with my pinky and do a little pull off and a scale natural minor down. Let me put that in rhythmic context so it makes sense to your ears because that's the most important thing is your ears. And right there, I'm gonna outline a minor seven flat five chord. I had never heard of a minor seven flat five chord before I went to school, but they taught me one and I ended up loving them. In context, they sound great. So I wanna outline that with uh, sort of this broken arpeggio. You can hear how that outlines that sound. So all together, And then just a straight natural minor scale down in octaves. You know this one. But I'm picking it and starting on a lower octave each time. Connecting it all together. And then I add six more notes. It's just uh, the next step up in harmonic minor. Super slow. open string and it starts all over again. Let's see, after that I basically repeat it but I change the ending fast uh, lick to an ascending lick. Same notes, just reverse order, starting on the low note A. Then I go down to the, what is that, a G sharp? And do some more harmonic minor, very slowly. Then we have some arpeggios, string skipping arpeggios. This one is sort of a D minor. D minor 9, it's got a fourth thrown in there too. That's the basic shape. Same exact thing down here in fifth position in A minor. Isn't it nice when licks repeat themselves? You 